Hey, it's Mac with PriceActionTradingSystem.com, and it is Tuesday. It's February 8th. This will be our chart lesson for the day, and I thought I'd start out by showing you the daily chart. Uh, we're still working sideways here, but we definitely finally got a bounce here. You notice we found resistance right at the uh, midline. That's where it, those are the highs of the day. Looks like we're trying to go higher at this point. We'll have to see. Uh, I would expect we'd at least attempt to make a retest of this high and maybe even another leg up. Uh, you can see that we have a new low here and you get a first entry and then a second entry. So uh, technically we got a failed second entry short there. It is below the midline or the EMA. So I wouldn't look at that. I, if it was on the other side of the EMA and bouncing, I'd say, hey, we're probably going higher for sure. At this point, it could still just be some sideways stuff because most everything is inside this bar right here. As you can see, to, uh, yesterday we made an equal low. Today we went slightly lower. But notice how nothing's closing down there. That's There's lots of buying coming in down here around this price level. And so there's a good chance we're going to at least make a new uh, uh, or make an attempt at a new high here. And I'm thinking we may we may rally and maybe we'll make another leg up. We'll just have to see. It's too early to tell by the daily chart. Let's go over to the intraday 2000 tick chart and take a look. Okay, first off, a couple of interesting things about today, and I talked about this in the mid-morning chart, that if we didn't make this target here, uh, generally that's an indication we're probably going to trade much higher, and look what happened. We, we rallied real strongly here. Uh, actually sold off and still went higher and closed higher. That's a good sign. Uh, but when we, but notice we got a leg down, and then there's a two-legged correction, and that's generally the center of the pattern. So you could expect a measured leg possibility of a measured leg down and anytime you come up that short from a target like that it's looking really good like that that generally means you're going to go much further in the other direction if prices start rallying and that's exactly what happened and if you're uh, you know if you if you look at our my mid-morning charts you'll see that i talked about exactly that very thing possibly happened and so this is very common in price action make sure you if you don't quite understand what I just said, go back and listen to this a few times. Listen to it over again. Uh, make sure you hear it. Uh, I'll talk about a trade, and somebody will come and send me an email, and, and I know I explained exactly what I was talking about, and somebody will come. I, I, sometimes I think people, I know these videos are long sometimes, and maybe if you listen to it, if there's a trade you're not quite sure about, listen to me talk about it a couple of times, because sometimes maybe you just don't quite understand or you miss something I'm saying. Because a lot of these trades, I know I talk about them. I explain exactly why I liked them or, and, or didn't like them. And sure enough, somebody will send me an email on that very trade and say, why did you mark this trade? I don't get it or whatever. But if you don't get it, uh, listen to it a few times. And some of you are going to be so new, you're not going to get it. So uh, I'm not trying to discourage you from posting in the forum or sending me messages. But I just get so many emails that if it's not critical that you send it, I'd prefer you not. So I, that's my point. And if you can save an email by listening to it a couple of times, please do it. Um, and if and if it's, you know, like I said, if I don't talk about it, I understand. But if I, and if I don't talk about it, there's a reason I don't like it. But if you can't figure it out, the idea is you should try to figure it out on your own uh, to see what, so you can learn this stuff. If you just ask me all the time, you'll probably never learn much. But the, the key is for you to, Take your chart, compare it to this chart, listen to me talk about the trades, and try to figure it out. And when you can't figure it out, by all means, drop me a line. If, if you're a member of the forum, I'd prefer you do it in there. Uh, if not, drop me an email. So, all right, let's talk about the trades. Uh, look, we start out with this big move down, and then we just started going sideways. Early on, though, there was a two-legged correction, and we were moving down really strongly there. Uh, and I thought maybe we'd go lower. But we didn't, so it turns out we were in this uh, pink channel here, and we finally did attempt to go lower, had a failed break, but it failed quickly, got back inside, tested those lows multiple times, and when prices couldn't go back, even back to this low, it was off to the rallies. And that's what happens. Prices just go back and forth between support and resistance, and they test them, and if, and if they hold, they continue on. And that's what these channels and trends are they're just slanted support and resistance so prices will go back and forth between support and resistance until eventually 
this trend line won't hold. You'll get a retest at a new high, and a lot of times that'll lead to one or two swings to a new high, and then it corrects. And I didn't measure these, but got one leg down and a second leg down, and we actually went much further than that. You can see we surpassed that, and but of course we found the support and couldn't get through it, and what happens? We go higher again. And that's the way price action works. So let me uh, zoom in a little bit here. We'll get through these trades. A little slow this morning, but uh, a lot of green ones in there. And there's several more that uh, I didn't mark that you could argue argue for. And actually, I meant to at least put a green one on that one right there. I, I'd almost probably mark that uh, blue, but I'm going to leave it green because you're, you know, there's a good chance with this target down here that we might have a another trend out here so you got to be real careful with that one but that far away from the ema on a higher low most of the time i'm probably going i'm probably going to roll the dice on that one so uh, but let's talk about these trades okay uh this morning when i came in we had this trend working down we had a break and a new low and seven o'clock comes just as you're making this higher low right here i don't think you want to trade that higher low runs up it looks like maybe we'll get a reversal doesn't work out that way but then you get a second entry long and, and you could almost look at this as a new low it's it's pretty close and you try to go lower once twice and you're making higher swing lows there each time and this is a second entry long because it's a little below the ema i'm i'm not as crazy about it but you may take that second entry long and it also like i said you may look at it as really being uh two or three attempts to go lower, even though they're making higher lows, it's still the same thing. You're, you're trying to go lower in each time. And then notice how we bounce again and go higher. So I definitely call that a double bottom. So you get a first entry, then you push through the EMA pullback and you go long right above the EMA on a second entry, failed second entry short. I like that one. And you can see those higher lows. Every time we made a swing, we made a higher low. That's a good sign that you're probably at least going to test this high over here. And you may you may go up and test the next one. So um, this one, maybe you take it. It's real close. It's borderline. It's definitely green. If you want to be aggressive, take that trade. And it's close to you could almost argue it be blue, but I'm gonna leave it green. And this was the better trade. And you can see smart traders all come in here and look at it go higher. Although that's a pretty good move there. I think that's probably just a basic move off a second entry and several attempts to go lower with a higher low you just have to be careful about that ema but every time we've pushed up there we went right through the ema as you can see so uh, there's a good chance i mean there's evidence that you can push through that again so it's not like if we've been down here and every time we come back it's failing uh, we push through once push through twice so this would be the third attempt and usually the third time's the charm and anything we do here <clears throat> And, of course, we make that second leg up, and it's pretty close to being a perfect measured move, and then prices turn down. Um, I think you need a lower high here, and you just don't get it. You get one, but it's way over here, and it's too late now. And then we bounce again, and then we're just kind of chopping along. It's too, too much congestion there. We finally break out. We try to go lower once, twice. Um, again, you get... You're making higher lows. It's very similar to this. It's almost a repeat pattern. It looks a little different. It's a little bit sideways, but there's no uh, doji looking bar, bar with no body there. So uh, even though that's sideways, uh, notice how we're making a higher high, higher low, higher high, higher low, higher high. That's we're swinging higher there, and you don't see the doji. I like that trade. Take that trade. You could almost argue for that to be blue. If it wasn't a little bit of overlap there, I'd I'd say. That'd be blue all day long um, because it's a failed second entry short. That's the other thing. It is a failed second entry short in a trap. And uh, it runs up. It tests the high again. And now look how many times we've turned down there. That's a triple test. Notice we made the high. We test it once. We test it twice. So that's a double test or a triple test, depending on how you word that. I, we've called it that both over the years. But it's the same thing. This sets the price level. This is the first test. This is the second test. And that's a triple test if you add all three of them up. Really, we 
these are a little bit lower than this. So you might have looked at this setting the test and or, or the top and then one, two, but it's just too congested there. And you do have that doji in there. And there's another one that almost has no body. So those are a little different. Make this a little bigger. But you can clearly see that doji. And it closed right on the low there. That's congestion. Uh, but I like that for a triple test maybe. I marked it green. It's close to being red. There's a lower high here, but look how that midline's been holding. That's just too dangerous, even though prices do go in there. Now, there is a failed second entry long here, and it turns down. But if you, it's it's just a really big bars, 19 ticks. Uh, I mean, in the big scheme of things, I just don't know if I'd trade that on an engulfing bar. And the problem is it closes and opens and drops. I don't think. By the time you get in it, it's already reversing. So I just don't think you can take that, even though there's a failure there. And it looks like a reversal, and I like it. I just don't think it's set up where you can get in it. There's, there's several negatives against it there. Of course, we bounce. You get a higher low here, but don't take that. And again, you probably can't get in that until it's coming back, and then it's really too late because you get stopped out, and it goes up, makes a lower high, and it turns down again. So again, this is just chopping sideways. I don't see anything in there I like. Uh, you could look at a first entry, second entry, but that's we're closing, and then you get another. That, that's just congestion right there. Uh, prices end up going lower, but you can't risk that one. We drop down and we get a failed break lower. It's really tempting to take that one, but in but because we're looking for another leg down, I would at least wait on the high or low, and even then, it's still a little. Uh, it's still a little risky, but there's a long way back to the EMA, and we really haven't tested the breakout yet. Actually, we probably you probably could say we came back and tested that breakout right there. Maybe I had this a little higher, I think, earlier, and I moved it later in the day as we had more touches down here. I believe I remember that correctly. Um, I'd have to go back and look and see where I had it earlier, but I think I had it a little higher earlier. And anyway... You may take that higher low. It's worth risking to ride it back to the EMA, and just, and you might catch a low of the day. I mean, at this point, I'm still leaning towards a measured leg down, though. So, um, and of course, you do get a reversal right there. But I didn't mark that because, again, look at that bar. How all of these are inside of it, and you got that little doji there. Uh, you probably could still trade that one as a failure. <laughs> We weren't quite, we, you, you expect prices to come back and test this right here, uh, the support before it goes higher. And so I just didn't trust it from right there, uh, especially with the sideways stuff. Did you argue for it to maybe be green? Yeah. Uh, and of course, it does just what you think. You, you come back and you test that, and then it goes higher. There's a higher low here, but it's not off the EMA. It's right into the midline. Still would have worked, but I think you're better off to wait on see if you get a second entry. Of course, it runs up. And then, um, again, you've got a first entry and a second entry um, that fails. But I think this turned, I'm pretty sure this broke lower first and turned up. So you didn't get your second entry till here. So it's not a failure until it turns down from there. So that would be right below that bar when it broke lower. And that's just too risky because by then it's starting to, you got two bars that look kind of like the sideways doji look. And it even actually goes up and tries again. And so there's a good chance they're going to trap somebody and go lower here. But you just can't risk that trade. It really should be. Mark this congestion. I didn't mark it, but it's it's definitely congested. You can see that when I draw the little. I'll just make it a little bit darker so it's a little easier to see. And you can see there, that's just sideways congestion. We drop down. You come back and you make another test, and this one fails a little bit. But now you got a triple test down here, and look at that bullish bar that it actually broke lower and turns up and goes out the other side. This is, you're better off to wait and see if you get a reversal, but this is another one with that triple test and it quickly failing on the breakout. It might be worth taking because you might catch this move. And that's, and you know, the fact that we haven't been able to, now you've got a lot of evidence that we've been in this trend, uh, or I'm talking about, I'm sorry, 
we've been in this range, but we hadn't been able to get anywhere near that target on this measured move down. Look how far, far we missed that by. That's a sign of prices that are probably going to go higher, just like they did here. And but again, you might take that and then you run up and you get a first entry and you get a second entry short. But on top of that, you get a first entry and a second entry long. Uh, I like going long right there. Boom, look at it go. The shorts all had to run out. And you can tell that that's a trap right there and that all these, there was a lot of shorts that they ran their stops or maybe they just had to all exit. And then people, the smart traders realize we're going higher. And they come piling in and look at it go. And if you catch this one trade, you catch this whole, you could catch this whole move. At least you could catch it to the highs up here. So that would be my first, my first target when we go back up would be the highs of this range. Second target would be the close from yesterday. Third target's going to be this high right here. And then uh, the next target would probably be the support right in here. Now acting as resistance, you can see we started to get resistance right over here. And that's probably more into the resistance there. And then we'd test that one. And you can see that's about where we got to today. We went a little higher and then we turned down again when we see the black line across there. So that those that's how you find your targets. We actually end up correcting and going even higher than that. Um that's how you find those targets and if you get a good leg you can try to get a measured move um, but I don't see anything in here it looks this looks like a spike in a channel and I don't see anything in there it looks like now you might measure this leg from here and start here and see what we get uh, but by that but we're already in the next day so it doesn't really matter I wouldn't want to use that now so uh, anyway that's a great move. Uh, you can't enter right in here. There is a little double test of that. If it tested it one more time, I'd say go with it. But notice there is a first entry. Let's zoom out here a little. Or zoom in here a little. There's a double test in the second entry, but you got to go long right into those highs. And this breakout could fail. It, you know, that's what's happening is a lot of people are looking for it to possibly fail. And they're trying to short it. And... They get trapped, and there it goes. I don't see any reason to go short here. If you're paying attention to that channel, this is the first close outside, so we're likely to go higher. Uh, the problem is you may only go one tick above that, and you probably don't get your four ticks, and it could turn down. Now, could you take that trade? Yes. Could you mark it green? Yes, but I definitely wouldn't mark it blue. And, of course, you run up first entry, second entry, but you're a little too far away from the EMA. But you can see this thing's picking up steam. That's what a strong trend looks like. When you get all these little bars with dojis that just keep going higher, now it's now you know you got a strong trend, and we're probably going much higher, just as I suggested uh, earlier this morning. And, of course, you come off that side, you get a first entry, second entry, and it's right off that trend line. That's not a perfect signal bar. I still like that trade, so I'm going to mark it green because this is starting to look like a strong trend. And look at it go. And I don't see any entries I like up here. But when it starts uh, bouncing off the EMA over and over and over in a strong trend, although that doesn't look strong, when you see those dojis like that in little bars and very shallow corrections and we just keep going higher or same thing, just keep going lower in a downtrend, pay attention to them and try to find a way to get on. And right here we made a lower high. It's lower than that one. So you get a first entry, second entry, and you can see that midline still holding. That's The only reason I made this green is because it's at the high of the day. You don't have much room. and you can. It, but there is room to get out before this upper trend channel, and that's right where we go to. And then we run down. You get a first entry. You get a second entry right there. And notice that you get a close outside and a new low. I mark this one green because it's below the EMA. It's right into the EMA. It's right into the trend line. And you could get that second push down. So better to wait maybe on a higher low. But I'll be honest with you, I like that trade. It's a second entry at the trend line. Nice, strong bar. It actually broke lower and turned and went up. and went out the other side. Closed on its very high. 
but you can see we do get another attempt. Even though we don't break lower there, there's a triple bottom. And look at this bar. Uh, I don't know if I'd go long at the high. You could. But what I'd probably do is let it break higher and drop a limit order. A few ticks back, maybe a point back, and see if you get a little better entry. But you can take this one right up here. Um, and then you actually get a reversal right here. And um, the only reason I didn't mark that was because you got your four bars side by side. Two of them are dojis or don't, or don't really have a body. Uh, but again, because this is a strong trend and you know the shallows, the corrections are all shallow and it's right at the trend line, you could argue for that to be green. Especially if you recognize this kind of trend. Especially if you recognize a spike in channel on top of that. So all three of those could technically be blue. But again, it takes off. And now you've had a break and a couple legs up to a new high, so you got to be real careful here now. So uh, it just starts trending lower here. Uh, but I don't see anything I want, would like to take short. Maybe this one because it's a triple test, but the, bar, the signal bar is not very good. But finally, you make a lower high. And you really could trade that lower high. But I didn't mark that. That's another one you could argue to be green. Um because it, it really, it all, it moved all the way from one side to the other. So for a lower high, I'm not crazy about it. But when you get a fail, first entry, second entry long that fails, and both of them are right off the key entry point trend line, and then you get a first entry, second entry, you got to pay attention to that. I like that one. I'm surprised that one didn't go a little further. Uh, but it's a quick, easy trade. Bounces. Um uh, and we actually get a triple test, but you don't get a signal bar here. It's kind of a shame because it would have been a nice long there. It is a second entry. Uh, it's a failed second entry short. Uh, it's a triple test. And unfortunately, the signal bar is just not very good. Now, if you treated it, if now you could say that was a failure. I mean, that's not really what a failure looks like. But I guarantee you they trapped some shorts here on this trade because that technically that's a second entry notice the new low first entry and then second entry we know better to take that trade but uh a lot of people don't and it reverses on them. so looking at that a little closer if i was watching that in real time i might have i might have took taken that trade I, I would mark it green but because it's not really the way a reversal sets up it should set up above the ema but that's a triple test, and we've already got a break. And uh, did we get a new low? We didn't quite get a new low, but still, with that triple test and how strong this market's been here, that's a good sign that we may make another run at the top. And it ends up just running up and getting a first entry, second entry. And notice the little trend, micro trend channel. You get a close outside, move to a new high, and look how bare. I like this one just because it's so bearish. If we didn't get such a nice bearish bar, I, I'd probably mark that green. But that bar, we're probably coming back to the EMA at a minimum. And you can see we end up going where everybody thought here. And this is why you got to be patient sometimes. You know, if it set up is questionable, just wait. Because you might get the chance at this. And even though I'm not sure you'd get a runner there, uh, man, it's a nice move. And then if you, even if you didn't catch that, then you get a new low here and a first entry and a second entry. And look at that signal bar. And you would have caught a runner here. It wouldn't have been a great one, but still you get. I mean, I don't think I would have ridden it down to there, but just say down to here, there's seven points there. So. And then of course. We come down here and we start testing this low again. You actually get a triple test right here, but not a very good signal bar. But when it comes back again and you get that and it goes lower, this might turn out to be another important low. And uh, I like that. I marked it green because it's a little advanced. It's a little aggressive. But I tell you what, I'd probably take that trade. And then I definitely take this higher low, and off it goes again. I mean, that's the trade of the one. That's one of the better trades of the day, right there. And that's also a second entry long. Notice the new swing high, first entry, second entry. So you got a triple bottom here, 
with a second entry long and a nice strong signal bar look at it go and it runs up we finally get a break but by the time anything's going on again it's into 2:30. so there's our day and this is a little long it's 25 minutes so i'm not going to beat around the bush but there's some there were some great moves in here there's a lot of green ones and you could like i said some of those green ones are real borderline could swing either way um but I think if you're being realistic, you, you probably want to call most of the green ones green ones, or I wouldn't have marked them that way. So if you might have seen something a little differently, we won't always see them all exactly the same. And your chart might look a little different on some of these too. So your signal bar, if that's the case, something like that, it might, you know, it might be right there borderline. You could argue for it to be green or red. So but if you stick to the blue and red ones, you're gonna have you're gonna not have as many trades, but you're gonna have a lot more success. I promise you that. So, and some of these red and green ones, or I'm sorry, some of these red and blue ones are a little more advanced. So if if you're not a newbie, don't spend a lot of time on them because you're just gonna slow your learning curve. You need to learn those organically, and what I mean by that is stick to the basics and learn the basics. And as you get better, those will make sense. And you won't have to ask, why is that this? Or why did this do that? You will understand it. You know, some of these, some things build on other things. This is, you're basically learning this language, this chart speaks a language. And it's just like trying to learn any written language. If, if you're an, a native English speaker and I write you an email in Russian and you don't understand Russian, it's just gibberish. Well, this chart is speaking, but if you don't understand chart language, this chart is just gibberish to you. It's just bars on a chart. But once you learn to read it, just like if you learn to read Russian, you could read my Russian email. You could read this chart, and it's telling you things. And you, you've got to get to that point, and it doesn't happen overnight. And it doesn't happen without a lot of hard work, a lot of study, and a lot of repeti repetition, and then immersing yourself in this thing. So uh, don't expect it to come quickly. I cringe when I get these emails of people saying, yeah, I lost my job or I need to, some extra money and I want to try to supplement it learning to day trade. Oh, not, it's not because you can't do that, but you're not, but if you're needing money now, by the time you learn to trade, it ain't going to matter anymore. You either going to got yourself out of the hole or you're going to be broke one of the two, because you're not going to learn this in a couple of weeks. So don't, wherever you go on the internet and you hear people tell you that and show you these easy, how easy it is run as fast as you can go because they either want to sell you something or they they don't know what they're talking about because it's not possible this is a skill you're trading against professionals that are very skilled it's a zero-sum game in other words the only way you can make a dollar is for somebody else to lose a dollar and these skilled professionals do not lose very often they're hard to beat and the only way you're going to make money is to get as good as they are. And you're not going to do that in a couple of months. You may not, you probably won't do that in a year or two, but it's worth sticking it out because when you can do it, you've got your own personal ATM and you can make a great living sitting in your house a couple hours a day. So it's worth the effort. It's just like trying to be a medical doctor. Not everybody's got, going to smart. Some people aren't smart enough, but most people can't stick to it because you got to go to school for 10 or 12, 15 years, and you got to spend hundreds of thousands of dollars in school. And most people are not willing to do that. But the ones that do, look at, look how doctors live. Look at the money. But look at their lifestyle. Always on call. they got patients to deal with, nurses to deal with, other doctors to deal with. You know, We don't have to deal with anybody. It's just me and your, it's just you and your screen or me and my screen. In my sitting in my house, dressed how I want to be dressed. And when I'm done trading, I don't have to answer to anybody. If I don't want to trade that day, I don't have to tell anybody. I don't have to worry about somebody firing me because I didn't show up. This is the best job in the world, but it's a hard one. And that doesn't mean it can't be done, but that means you got to, it, but it, it can't be done easily. And so if you see some other trader showing you this same stuff I'm trading you, because they're out there, they've stole my work, they've, you know, there's copycats everywhere and they'll tell you and they, they show you some easy video of how I made this amount of money in this amount of time. If they're selling something, just be wary of them. So, because you can't learn this stuff 
you can't take a class a course for me and in a year be teaching it and selling it and knowing what you're doing it's been possible so anybody anybody that claims they've you know they are just be wary of them check them out make sure i mean generally you know generally you get that little the light goes off and you say hey this person sounds trustworthy or they don't uh and there you know most there are some good people out there teaching stuff but just be very wary because you can't learn it quickly and if they're trying to tell you you can take their stuff and learn it and do it quickly and be day trading tomorrow and supplementing your job on the side don't believe that stuff please don't believe it because it's it's not possible for 99 percent. there might be that half a percent and everybody thinks they're that half a percent but you're not trust me so uh, i thought i was that half a percent cost me a lot of money early on I wish somebody told me about sim trading and saving your money and not blowing accounts until I learned it because I didn't know any better. I believed all the crap I read out on the internet and don't believe that stuff. If you don't learn anything else from me, understand this can be done. This, if you can read this chart, you, you've got a skill that can last you a lifetime and it's almost like an ATM. When you need money, you go get it, but it's not an easy skill to obtain. So anyway, I'm going to wrap it up. We'll be back again to do it tomorrow. This is Mac with PriceActionTradingSystem.com, and we'll see you next time.